did that as well, fellas. It's a term he knows well, Myron. Growing up in Bucks County, watching John Cheney's Temple teams grow up a big, big five fan. Now he gets to be a big five coach, and his Temple Owls are one of three teams remaining here at the American Championship. Orlando's pool, Todd Austin, and then Mike Nance will throw it up. Settle and Golden for the tip. The Owls of Temple, the Owls of Florida Atlantic. North Philly meets Boca Raton in Fort Worth. And Mateo Piccarelli wins the jump for the Temple Owls. On to the championship game with a win with the UAB Blazers approaching. Temple found something last night playing with a smaller lineup with Hoffman around the perimeter doing just that. Good look to start this one. You get both bigs that can play around the perimeter. They can lift that FAU defense, get both layups and dunks. As well as three. FAU starting five. Gaffney, Weatherspoon in the guards with Martin, Golden, and Davis all all conference players. And a Sear Miller in the grill of Jalen Gaffney who pokes it forward to Elijah Martin. Leaning into the Temple bench and he was bumped and fouled right there. Whoever wins, FAU has already won in the uniform department, by the way, with their Miami Vice inspired tops. There's Dusty May, one of the hottest names in coaching. Who knows where Dustin May is going to end up? It's always a subject of speculation. Right now, who cares? He's at FAU where he's done a marvelous job. The final four team a season ago, and they look poised to be right around the 8 9 line again in the NCAA tournament. Brandon Weatherspoon, thanks to a screen from Golden, gets a clear lay to the hoop and opens the scoring for FAU. I'm really most interested to see how much Temple can take FAU out of transition. Force resets, get their defense set, get the communication up. That was something Adam Fisher mentioned last night. Late in that game, he just kept saying, communicate. We've got to be elite communicators defensively. And they were down the stretch, and it's why they're playing in the semifinals. Same starting five every game of the tournament. And Jordan Riley is part of it. A three-pointer for Riley, who had 11 points all after the break yesterday. FAU, the highest scoring team, the best offense in the American. 83 a game in conference play, 83 a game overall. Weatherspoon into Golden. Huge tight advantage on Hoffman. Can't finish. Riley flies in for the rebound. Riley's got to have a good game. I thought he had to have one last night. He had a good second half. He was very effective, and that's why they had the chance to win the game the way they did. He was the Temple Tough player of the game. He got the boxing gloves in the locker room after the game, according to Adam Fisher. Riley will step back here, and Golden cleans up his miss, and then throws it right to the waiting settle. Settle feeds Piccarelli, open for three. Mateo Piccarelli scoreless the last two nights with a triple off the settle steal. He's gotten good looks, and when he does, he makes a higher percentage. Last night, he didn't get great looks. There's Martin with a big three last night, late in the six-point one over North Texas. Martin gets settled in the year, feeds Weatherspoon, steps inside Miller, Weatherspoon, Gaffney all alone. That's an answer, Jalen Gaffney with an FAU triple. I think the matchup with settle cover Martin is just going to be tough because Martin's going to be able to get that ball into danger spots for the defense where it's going to have to force a collapse. And then that good ball movement, FAU's going to be able to find open threes. Temple 11 in the league in offensive efficiency. Worst field goal percentage in the American. They've shot better in the second half the last two games. Do you have anything positive to say? Yeah, they won with their defense. They're here. Riley inside, leading in on Golden. Rebound John L. Davis, who is the second leading rebounder for FAU. Co-player of the year in the conference. Davis bumped by Hoffman. No call. Hoffman went straight up, and then Riley swims through Weatherspoon. Piccarelli on the bounce back for Riley. Knocked away from Hoffman by Elijah Martin. Gaffney, three. My Temple brain is bench. anticipating a whistle line yeah, to John after what we saw in the first game. It feels weird we haven't really had much. But look at the Temple bench. Really into it. They've been passionate and emotional. I really have enjoyed watching Temple play because of the belief that they've established. Passion that has grown over the course of the week. Hoffman against Golden. Hoffman fadeaway. 
the U.S. Four new players set to come in as a reckless Martin pass finds its way to Riley. Second turnover for FAU. Here is Miller, who is the leader for Temple. 36 and a third minutes a game, second most in the league. Steve Settle. He's had a big tournament shooting, blocking, stealing. Miller. That's not close, and that will lead us to the under 16. So a couple of early threes for Temple. The 11 seed trying to extend its stay in Fort Worth. Work every day. His family loves it. And he's not that far from the beach. So whatever he ends up doing, there's a lot of competition because he loves what he has in Boca Raton right now. Yeah, and it's funny. Part of the challenge, it's not just pay, right? We think of it as like, oh, well, Coach can make more money going elsewhere. It's resources. The resources are what allows you to compete at the highest level, and when the expectation is what you do in the NCAA tournament, meaning following up the Final Four run, resources are significant when it comes to competing against those at the top, and I mean the Power Five. Donald Davis steps into the three. It's blocked by Jaleel White, grabbed by Jordan Riley for Temple. I've heard you say that you think Florida Atlantic can try to build something and be the Gonzaga of yes. East. Why do you think that? You, I think because of the way it's communal, but also because your style can determine who you are. I think you can play a certain style, you can win every single year, you can be an NCAA tournament team every single year, and the way they play will put them in a situation where they can win NCAA tournament games. So there's a culture, there's an identity, there's a community behind it that is local, and that local community also has the transplants from the Northeast in particular. I ran into more Penn State fans down at FAU than anywhere else. And it's a community that's built around the FAU program. So I think there are a lot of similarities. Also being a small school that people just watch for the basketball, right? The basketball is what gets your attention. The rest kind of follows. Giancarlo Rosado with the first basket for FAU, which has brought four players off the bench. I'm hoping for a little more out of Rosado, who's taking some time to get back to full health. There's many more reasons. It's just they require a spreadsheet explanation. And there's Rosado, basket at one end. Block shot at the other, and if they can get Giancarlo Rosado back to the form he was early in the year, they become so much more dangerous. I think part of that is just simplify the approach, right? You don't always need to be on the tack. I think one of the things Dusty May said earlier this season when we were covering that was we were asking about the different bigs, and Carroll was in that conversation who's out right now. Carroll was terrific for them when, when Rosado was out. But he said Rosado's a great ball mover. He has great feel. Well, some of that in a way gets sacrificed when you try to do too much. So he needs to get back to just kind of serving that role really well. Jaleel White, strong drive, it wouldn't drop. And Brennan Lorian kept, I guess, the toes of the left foot down, didn't travel. Boy, up top. Brennan Lorian has found a burst of energy from Brennan Lorian, who has provided some instant energy off the bench the last couple of games. I think having a lob guy, whether it be in transition in their half court, I think having the lob guy gets the defense to, to get a little bit more compressed, right? I mean, you have to sag and take that lob away. Well, that opens up some perimeter opportunities. So Lorian really attacking those lobs. It's an added weapon for FAU that does support what they want to do. Like a pick and roll guy. It's great when you have shooters around the perimeter. Right, it, it's great. It's just going to collapse that defense if you run it well. Then to be able to get through your options, whether it be a short ball, pick and pop into a dribble handoff, really expands upon the options they have with an offense. 6 9 sophomore from the Orlando area. Two free throws good for Lorian, who was only 8 for 24 at the line. Conway hits those two. The other thing FAU has, uh, and it's really their games are events. Right, there are things where there's multiple students that get turned away. When I say multiple, there's hundreds of students that, that don't fit in the arena. They've created every basketball game to be an event, like a concert with a basketball performance. And I think that's something that everybody around the country needs to look at because it's important for growing the game within your university. White got Rosado to commit the foul, and Julio White has a chance to tie this game at the line with a strong finish. Did he? 
Did he commit the foul or did we bail out? Offense that kind of got stuck. I mean, I thought Rosado did a good job. His hands are up. His hands are up. His hands are up. Hands are up. I, I don't, I just don't really know what you can do defensively outside of letting them shoot a layup, which is off the table as a defender. In most instances. Well, yeah, you got 4,000, you're up 30 points. Maybe you let them shoot a layup. There's still 13 what about, left in the what first about half. You have 4,000, you're up 26 points. But I still would. Okay. 22. How long are we going to work this? I to find the line. <laughs> working until it stops becoming funny, and they keep working until it becomes funny again. Boyd. Nick Boyd had a big game off the bench yesterday. There, his first two. He's really tough. I, I, I think Nick Boyd's aggressiveness is such a weapon. He's in off the bench. He's aggressive on the ball. He's aggressive attacking. He looks to score. Always gets to the open spot, too. When you get to the open spot, you, you change how the defense defends. Real White driving into Rosado. Boyd comes there to help. White, fade away. No. Up for grabs. Down for Martin, who bounces it forward to Boyd. Up ahead, Greenlee. Hauser so lethal in transition, and Greenlee throws it away. Little over eager there from Brian Greenlee, but Dusty May still likes the effort. Temple will bring Hoffman and Settle back into the game for White and Wiley. Vlad Golden on to get Rosado. I think you gotta get try to get Settle involved here. He's he's really been an added weapon when he's making threes, playing off the bounce. He's been able to handle it a lot better in the last couple months as opposed to the first few months of the season where the major adjustment was just up to the physicality, the athleticism, the length of this level. Temple one for its last nine and Barry smothered by Golden. FAU's shot block leader. He's got more than half the team's blocks. And it sets up Lorian. That's a long two and it doesn't go anyway. Shane Dezoni off the bench with a Temple rebound. Dezoni another guy uh, who's just been good. Not great, but really good. Maybe great in the role that he's created and, and the role that's evolved for himself. Temple bench has been very good between Dezoni and Zion Stanford primarily. Really like Stanford. Uh, I mean, that's a kid who's just going to get better and better. Dezoni, Martin did a good job to close out on him. Quante Berry airmails a three. Temple is just three for 15, but they forced three turnovers, so they're hanging around. One of these teams will have a chance to hold the American Trophy tomorrow. UAB the last couple of days, and Myron, it's been an awesome Thing to watch Adam Fisher in his first year as a head coach. Yeah, and as a pencil guy, he's really talked a lot about Temple Tough and just the legacy of this program, but he's done more than that. He's brought in a bunch of former players and talked to his team, including the 1999 Elite 8 team from Temple, and he feels like that is a way to connect this current group to the Titans. Well, the finishes over quicker. John, you're from right around the Philly yeah. area, too. I love Temple's one of the winningest programs in college basketball history that no one knows about. Uh, the history is there. My grandfather played there in the 50s, back-to-back -back Final Fours, Harry Lickwack coach team, Guy Rogers. I mean, the history is there, but the world around this has changed so much where I think it's getting harder and harder to keep local kids in city schools. Really, it goes back again to resources. Does Temple have the resources that some of these other big schools have? The answer is absolutely not. But what comes first? Wins or resources? I think that's the thing. You've got to win to give people hope and belief in the program that the investment is worthwhile. Mr. Miller, Zion Stanford, the two true blue Philly kids on the roster. Here is Stanford. West Catholic High School leaning in, missing it short. Elijah Martin's got his seventh rebound. It's as many as all of Temple. The other thing is, I think we sleep on the. I'm not just saying this as a suburban, a Philly suburban kid. Golden, what? I don't know. I don't know. Just moved past that. I don't know what happened. <laughs> kind of got hung and then it slipped over the rim, but. The, the Philly suburbs are full of good basketball players as well. But are you getting those kids to come to Philadelphia? That, that's the challenge, man. But I grew up playing Sunny Hill League in Philadelphia. Steel, boy, good hands. Weathers, boom, well, finish. Either those last two are in the dunk contest. Who cares? They got baskets. They lead by eight. At least they made them. Yes. They missed three yesterday, I think. Miller. 
Stanford had it knocked away by Gaffney. This is where FAU can really get you, especially a tired Temple team. And Golden was undercut there by Sam Hoffman, who picks up his second foul. Great this dunk, Kevin. Again, this is coming from somebody who couldn't touch the net if I made him do it. What are you giving that one? I'll have you know I dunked a tennis ball once. Yeah, sure. I did. That was glorious. I was there to see it. It's like a get hung flush. Yeah. I rate both of those two for two points. What do you want me to say? Weak the sauce. French judge know. gives it a 3.7. It's true though. They missed what three or four dunks last night. I mean, they were like there. The one was Laureate was too high, right? He was so high that it's hard to throw it down. It's the rare missed dunk because the guy got too far above the yes. rim. Ryan Greenlee, longest tenured player on the FAU roster. He's got me. He was out of bounds. Fourth turnover for FAU. I don't want to say that Temple looks tired. But there's something about this situation where I, as a former player, played three games in a row in the Big Ten tournament, can promise you that the exhaustion, that being tired, is it's more than just your legs, right? It's your emotions. It's the passion. You're tired of being passionate to bring that three, four consecutive days. Another good roll to home. Temple's one for its last 15. The overall emotional energy required to play in these games is exhausting. Now on Miller before the shot. Now you know who's going to be exhausted. It's Adam Fisher. He's not going to have a voice when this is done. We also, we mic'd him up yesterday. So so he was he got a little action in the huddles. So he's talking a little bit more than usual probably. He's going to be exhausted. We're going to hear from Adam when we return from under a break that is targeted for our all access huddle we'll see if adam has any kind of a voice left it's almost like i read the rundown almost though we know better we don't have <laughs> it's not a radio show. well there is a rundown you just haven't been given access to it Gaffney. Jalen Gaffney playing in his 158th career game. The former UConn Huskies got five, and this is the largest lead for Florida Atlantic. I was really paying attention to something Dusty may have shared with us a few times over the course of the season is their efficiency when the ball changes sides of the floor. Right? First side versus second, third side. When they get the ball moving east to west, they really get the defense chasing. And when they can get the defense chasing, man, they're hard to stop. Temple turnover, the second for the Owls. It's a 10-0 Florida Atlantic run with possession. I also think that they're just so much more well scouted in terms of opponents scouting FAU and, and what they do well, but also how to define what they do really well. L last year, and I had them in the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight in New York, and it was hard to define exactly what they do really well. Like, yes, it's the space, it's the flow, it's the rhythm they create, it's all five guys are threats, it's the ball movement, it's all those things, but there, there were still a lot of intangible things that are hard to pinpoint. I think teams are doing a much better job of limiting them. Davis, a couple of players, including Davis, have certainly seen their role grow this year, even though it's basically the same team. There's Gaffney uncontested in the hoop, making 12 in a row for FAU. And Gaffney's got that old man game, right? He doesn't need to go too fast, so he's all under control. Temple at 3 for 19 from the field. They're 1 for 12 from 2. One field goal in the last 10-30. And Greenlee with a second foul of the half for Florida Atlantic. It has been all FAU. The number Play, to play together! Deep breath, let's go attack. It's on ball on the side. I like the point he's making. One thing I would add to that, and I'll ask you this, ke this question, Kevin. you got a baby at home. When are you and your wife most emotional? It's when you're tired. Three in the morning. Right? It's when you're tired. And that's something you really have to prepare for as you come into this game. And that's more of the chess part of it, where it's going, guys, I know we're tired. And if you're not tired yet, you will be two minutes into this game. What we need to do is not allow being tired and fatigued to influence our emotions. So let's be aware of the fact that being tired makes you emotional. 
let's make it more about our passion. Let's play for a purpose, right? Talk to me about Amir Abdul Rahim. Playing for a purpose, right? Doing everything purposeful, including focusing on our passion, not our emotion, not letting our, our, our uh, fatigue, our tiredness impact our emotional state. What does FAU style do to hurt Temple in that respect? Oh, it gets well. you chasing, man. It gets you even more frustrated. So when you're emotional and getting frustrated, well, what happens? It spirals. It's, it's, it's a downward spiral where you keep just chasing the play. You don't feel like you're in control of the game you're trying to win. Temple hit just one two-pointer in the first 13 minutes, two from three. FAU shooting at 56% with an 11-point lead and Gaffney way off the mark from three. That's what I always say, like, you know, just added variables, right? It's the same way in life. It's the same way personally, right? You, you want to limit the variables so you can control your circumstances as best as possible. You have to consider the same things as a team. Off the miss by White. Here's Gaffney leading away with seven. Rosado, no points for Davis or Mart right now. And FAU still up by 11. Brian Greenlee swirls out of three. Rebound taken by Shane Dizoni. Devil with one field goal in the last 11 and a half minutes. It was a jumper by White, who was fouled. Brian Greenlee picks up his second. You know, you and I were talking at one of the breaks. You know, maybe it was before the game. I don't really remember, but we were talking about this. Basically, the added variables for Dusty May. Right, they go to a final four. Roles may be different the following year. You know, the added variables of, of you know self-consumption to a degree. I mean, to act like that's not a reality, get over yourself. It's absolutely a reality that players are going to become a little more self-consumed in the sense that they see potential at the next level because of the success they had. That's an added variable that you have to address and deal with. And I think that's one of the things that good coaches at really successful programs never get enough credit for. Zoni turns it over. Rosano turns it right back. Monte Berry trying to push the pace for Temple. Inside nice. Julia White. Nice smart move not to just immediately throw the lob. Made a good decision in transition. And Julia White catching it going right up. Probably the only shot he could have made. He's got five off the bench for Temple. Snaps an 0 for 8 stretch for the Owls. Lorient for Davis. But you just one for seven from deep. I like that they got Davis a look. He really hasn't gotten many good looks. He's been good off the bounce, but they've been better defensively containing him. Settle. Drives it into Nick Boyd. Settle. Up for Barry. He'll hesitate. He'll fire. This is Jaleel White with the offensive rebound. And White swims to the hoop. He's got half of the Temple points now. And there's a whistle and a timeout taken by Temple. I like it. Smart move. Rest your guts. Ten games or one possession games uh, in the final minutes. Couple of overtime losses. It's the kind of thing that can derail a team. It, it did didn't not. derail Temple. It did not. I mean, that's that's where you got to give Adam Fisher a lot of credit. It's so easy to feel the pressure and just crumble and cave. Uh, he did not crumble and cave. And, and I think that's where you got to give your coach. Your coach has to embody the things that your coaches are saying, right? Coaches say a lot, but until you embody it, no one believes it. Adam Fisher, the job he's done, the, the best is his embodiment of all the messaging and the communication that he's putting on his team. Like, that's the consistency that's required to develop culture that we value, culture that allows you to be successful. Without that consistency, there is no culture. It's just something you say. And there are plenty out there that just say it. I like our culture. Okay, what is it? Manuel Acomo is in the game immediately drawing the defensive assignment against Vlad Golden, who has another three-point play opportunity. It's just a tough one to stop. If he's going to get that position, if there's no dig down, I mean, by the time they got any sort of help in there, it was not to deter the spin to the middle of the lane. You want to dig down to keep him on that one side where there's help and there's no angle. He was able to get a better angle by getting into the middle of the paint. Jaleel White reached in for his second foul. He leaves the game. If you play angles in basketball, you could be an inferior athlete, an inferior basketball player, frankly, inferior defender, and you can have success. Learn how to play angles on the floor, force the toughest shots possible. Your opponent will shoot a poor percentage, and you'll be effective on the floor. But we don't really learn that until you almost work your way up to the next levels where the rules are different. How do you learn it then? 
<laughs> play a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. I'm telling you, I swear by one-on-one. -on -one. We don't play it enough. Put rules in the game. Play one-on-one. -on -one. Learn how to defend in space. Learn how to force the toughest shot possible. I learned it by playing against pros. He's yeah. only a three. Actually, a long two. I just think, you know, we have this mentality, in, particularly in the college game, that we need to stop every action because we're aware of what a team does. We just want to force the toughest shot possible. That's a pros do. Golden gets to the right hand. Golden scores it. Back to back possessions. They've got it on Como. And Vlad Golden delivers with nine points. Adam Fisher wants a three second call. I don't blame him for asking for it, but the problem is the defense is allowing Vlad Golden to get that catch in, in a bad spot. Miller on the running screen is Sear Miller with his first points. And then down the floor, it's thrown off the backboard by Davis. Davis can do that from time where he just heaves up some bad ones, gets bad turnovers. At six yesterday. Riley three pointer. It's amazing how that is. You make a three on one end, you get a careless turnover as you throw it down the floor, and you come back in another three, and, and now you start to feel it if you're Temple. Eight points off turnovers for Temple. Back within six. Davis still yet to score. Full player of the year in the American. Almost threw it away again. Golden's going to have the advantage, and if you allow him to get position on you, you're already beat. So it's almost as if you can find a way to ramp up your movement, which is ball and body movement, east to west, get defense chasing, but still find duck in, slip in, seal opportunities for Golden. It's when they freeze too much, forcing the ball inside, that they lose a little of what makes them really dangerous. At the same time, you could win the game by just doing that. And he's five for six. <laughs> So how do you find the balance? Seriously, the he's, he's been a challenge. 20 a game yep. now, seven of the last nine. But Kev, you you and I did the Memphis FAU game at Memphis, and I said the whole first half they were trying so hard to get the ball inside that they never really developed the movement and the rhythm that they need to really maximize their potential. So it's finding that balance. There's Martin, who still has yet to score. I think it's hard. I think it's like, yeah, you have the obvious advantage down low. And if he's able to get catches, you have to play to him. But are you ramping up your pace? Are you ramping up your tempo? And are you developing the rhythm that allows you to shoot a high percentage? Zoni inside of Golden Chief. Zoni is first field goal off the bench. That, that's interesting. I, 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 Tom Green, like just knowing. How he wants to play the game. I, I just wonder. The more you see it, the more you really start to think about what you would do. I don't know. That was more reaction than anything. Yeah, Weatherspoon went down quickly. It's an offensive foul against Dizoni. I would pose Adam Fisher's eyes are as big as a scoreboard. Right coach is in studio. I'll say, I'll pose it to coach. How would you find that balance? I think that's a big question. With the weapons they have, the way they want to play. How would you find that balance with feet and goal? Is it actions? Is it a set? Is there a lot? There's a lot there. Because you don't want to take away your team's greatest strength to play to your individual advantage. Or maybe you just do it and win the game and plan for tomorrow. I don't know. Well, he's off the floor now. Rosado returns. Number two to play. First half which has been led by FAU, but not necessarily dominated. Temple. And it's fourth game in four days, still hanging around. Here's the 11th seed of the American. Boy, tough runner wouldn't go. Homo, oh, he threw it right to Martin. But there's going to be a foul against FAU. For what? It's on Rosano. Called it Rosano. He got shut down of bounds. What did he do? All right. Hmm. That was an absolute phantom call. I mean, what are we wrong? Sometimes I just don't know. What, what did you see that led to a demonstrative call that no one else saw? Okay. Yep. Back we go with the steal. I was like, nah, we, we want to wave that basket. 
There's a foul. Riley's fired up. You know, before this auto went out, what I was going to say was maybe that's a good way to find that balance because Rosado has a good feel. He's a good ball mover. Maybe play him around the perimeter a bit more as a passer and a mover. Find it with Rosado on the floor and then play more through Golden when he's in. I don't know. I So it's like, it's almost as if I'm great with theories. I've <laughs> got an idea. Why don't someone else try this? Like, that's. Brandon Laurie at one and one. Brandon Laurie was eight for 24 in the year. He is three for three at the line today. There's a manipulation to all of it, too. Is, you know, the best coaches are, are the greatest manipulators, right? Sometimes you got to manipulate your own players to help them get out of their own way so they can do something that's universally beneficial for the group, right? But then there's also the part where you've got to manipulate the game a little bit to get what you need out of everyone, but also to do things to limit your opponent. And, and clearly, finding that balance is a manipulation for coaches. Seven point game, 65 seconds and a half. Winner gets UAB in the title game tomorrow. Four seed who upset South Florida. Rizzoni on the drive, on the step. Oh, that is denied by Lori. John Davis is going to score his first points. Brennan Lori and Turbo charging the break with a dunk. And Dusty May will take a timeout. Brandon Lillian, he's just been terrific. I think mean, this is an ideal situation. Itology, that all starts at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. You confused me there. You did the midnight thing. Selection Sunday starts at midnight for you, right? Sure. I was looking at the times. I was like, what time is it now? Where are we? Fort Worth, Texas. Still. I'm wrong, Dave Dave is Steve, right? Out of bounds by Elijah Martin with 11 to shoot. I really do think fatigue's playing a factor here for Temple. And, and sometimes it plays a subconscious role where you just don't attack as much. And I think that's part of it. Not looking to turn the corner. Dizoni will. Right? Stanford will. So there's going to be certain guys you can use to get to the basket. Riley will. Sear Miller is against. And rightfully so when he's having to give. Riley penetrating. That's a nice finish by Jordan Riley and a chance for one more. He is just crazy explosive. And as I've said before, I still think he's wrong in terms of his abilities and his skill with the floor. You know, with injuries limit you, know, situations at times limit you. So we've had a lot of guys play multiple programs. That can be situationally limiting, where the development is limited. You haven't really reached your full potential because you haven't been in a stable situation. I think stability for kids is something that often gets forgotten when we talk about NIL and the transfer portal and players' rights. How about stability, right? How about growth, both personally and professionally? I think that has to be a consideration. Maybe not a determining factor, but a consideration. Mike Golden back on the floor, Riley. Eight points, four rebounds, and a steal here in the first half. A man who had labrum and ankle issues in his time at Georgetown and was stuck behind a couple of skilled guards there. He's got to play a lot more at Temple, and he gets this back to a six-point game. FAU with a chance to hold for the last shot. They can advance the ball across half court, and they will with Martin. Boyd on the floor with Martin Davis, uh, Gaffney, and Vlad Golden back in there. And Dizoni knocks that pass out of bounds with five seconds to go. Yeah, I like this lineup for FAU. Uh, you have four scores around the perimeter and Vlad Golden, and that might be another way to right, help find that balance of utilizing the inside presence and dominance of Golden while having four guys spacing around the perimeter. And the John L. Davis, Davis driving, Davis blocked in a foul. Somewhere in there. Adam Fisher covering his face. It's called on Jordan Riley, the second. And a bump in the back, maybe. Sometimes you have to say maybe you don't really believe it. Well, so Kevin, why don't you take a stance for once he didn't like him in the back? Dude, it's a physical I think it's a game. foul. You think it's a foul? I wouldn't call it. That doesn't mean you don't think it's a foul. 
Davis has the first. I think there are a lot of fouls that shouldn't be called. And if you can't figure out the nuance in this game, not my problem. That was such a nice landing right there. We are stuck in Davis. Coach Dufres. One point one to go. Riley will leave it. Good if it goes. It didn't go. So, FAU leading by eight at the half. 33-25. Temple hanging around with Riley and White. Good performances, but Florida Atlantic shooting 50. That's where the problem. He said Temple's momentum was mainly due to their errors. If they cut those out, it feels like they can extend this lead even more. Their season low, 3 for 12 from 3 yesterday, and they went over North Texas. They're 1 for 8 from 3. Now they do have the lead, though. And we've seen Temple make second half surges the last two nights. We'll see if the 11 seed can do it again. They begin on defense with Black Golden in possession, and Black Golden getting a great look over the top of Sam Hoffman. But that was good because it was good action that led to it, right? It was him involved in some screening action. There was a switch, and then Hoffman's got to get back down. Like they played right to him, and he made a quick, decisive move. Didn't see a lot of Sam Hoffman in the first half for Temple. Neither he nor Steve Settle, who've been big the last couple of games, have scored. Miller lined up that three for an eternity. And Hasir Miller has his second triple today. You see long threes four and more because they're great shots. These guys have the strength to be able to shoot that thing with good touch. Weatherspoon will pull up, and Weatherspoon drains the three at the other end. You remember when we used to see a deep three, but an NBA three, as if it was like a big deal. Now these guys shoot from logos. I mean, look at Caitlin Clark for crying out loud. Weatherspoon three for three in the game. That's the second three for FAU. One for eight in the first half, and they get their first here in the second. Miller, another one. Love it. And another one goes. So four possessions in the half, four made baskets, and three three-pointers for these two owl teams. But there are times where opponents make shots, and then it actually plays this. It does it. It plays into the hands of the movement, that rhythm, the flow that FAU's trying to create. So making shots at times fuels your opponent if you're Temple. So you've got to make sure that off of a main basket, you get back and get established. Hoffman three. It's three in a row for Temple to start this second half. And Sam Hoffman is on the board. Be careful, because that's how our first game second half started out. Was it really a pretty finish? <laughs> Weatherspoon for Gaffney. Gaffney, oh, just threw it away. Martin took a step in the wrong direction as far as Gaffney was concerned, and that's our first empty possession of the half. I think Hoffman's got to make threes, too. I mean, you're going to get this. Force Black Golden around out past the three-point line. You have better spacing, better attack lanes for, for dribble drives. He and Seth will have to make some threes. Temple is now 7 for 14 from three. Three in a row to start the half. They've cut the lead to six. Miller's got Golden on him. What's he going to do with it? I don't know. Okay. Nothing. He got the switch with Weatherspoon. Miller, step back. Tough one. And there's the first missed shot for anybody in the half. You surprised Miller didn't try to take Golden there? He didn't have the space around him. And you've got to have shooters around you to have the space you need. He had the space around him. On the handoff from Weatherspoon. Big Vlad's up to 17. I was so close to just going, what has he done? Because it just, I feel like that's what he's saying. He is eight for nine now for the field goal. The third in the nation in field goal percentage coming in. It's not just that he takes layups. I mean, he's hit eight, nine foot jump hooks. Step back, settle. Golden with his third rebound. Which is so much better when Golden gets the ball within the action, right? On a roll, short roll. Davis around and out. Miller looking down the floor to Piccarelli. Piccarelli will pick his spot. He's fouled after hitting a three. He got hit in the eye by Vlad Golden, which means we're going to have a review. This will be interesting because we're going to look at it. And Vlad Golden said he was kind of got to figure out these silly reviews. Here it is in real speed. Real speed. All right. It's called a foul. I, I'm, I'm dead serious. If we don't have serious conversations how to fix these things, basketball is going to get annoying, and it's going to be less entertaining. 
make the game better. Figure it out. Stop. Stop doing all these stoppages and reviews. Figure out how to have them if you need to have them. If you need to spend the money, have a fourth official and have them be the review guy. But don't stop the game. All right. Come back. I appreciate it. I think it's often certain it'd be a good time to have a fourth official, too. If we're not going to do it every game during the year. You hear about money all the time. It's clear. There's enough, enough money for it. That's me, the money guy. Hoffman. So it's a five-point possession for Temple, and it's about to get more lucrative. Seven-point possession because of the flagrant foul, the putback oh, by Riley. It's a 7-0 run in between FAU touching the ball, and Elijah Martin will go to the line. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. A 7-0 run between FAU touching the ball. And Riley's just, he's a beast. He's a beast on both ends on the glass. He is very good as a defensive rebounder. Clocks out of nowhere. Offensively, you've got him off the glass. That was the second, second chance basket in the game, both for Temple, which is doing it again in the second half. Third straight down yeah. after a miserable shooting first well, half. A 7-0 run between opponent touches helps. <laughs> They've got 16 points in the half in 3.42. They have 25 the whole first half. <laughs> Elijah Martin, his first point of the day, and he adds another one. 13 and a half per game, the second team ball conference pick. And the lead is three for Florida Atlantic. Now, if Temple can get another seven point possession, they'll go up more. Thanks, Kevin. Back to Wilson. Miller on the handoff with Hoffman. Miller on the drive. Miller on the score. Nasir Miller with 11. Really good job feeling out that ball screen coverage. They didn't want to switch, but the screen was set so well, and Nasir Miller came off of it so well that it forced the switch, but the switch was late, so he had an angle to the rim. Brian Greenley wraps it into Davis. Nobody's guarding John L. Davis, and you might want to consider that if you're Temple. He does a good job sneaking in, kind of behind it, and then in between the defense. Not a physical presence down low, so it's easier for him to get around. Steve Settle. Step back over. Golden. Oh, yes, sir. Settle ties the game. And that's where Settle's been so good, is when he can create off the bounce, particularly against the big, he shot it well when he is that rhythm dribble. 21 points in the first five minutes of the half for Temple. Absolutely bonkers. They tied the score. Davis trying to create space. He tried too hard. It's an offensive foul. Temple bench. How many times have we said that in the last three days? Temple, oh my God, he's been really good off the bounce. When he can dribble the basketball, he creates rhythm into the shot and becomes a higher percent shot. This is what they did in the second half, the last two games against SMU and Charlotte. Plus eight in the second half right now. How about this? Florida Atlantic is five for six in the second half, <laughs> and they've been outscored by eight. How does that happen? Yeah, well, there's an answer to that. Byron, what do you have? You know, talking to coach in, in that huddle, he said, listen, we got to really step it up on defense. I've never seen Destiny May that mad, fellas. I've been around him a lot. He was furious with the way that these guys were playing, asking him to make a better commitment on the defensive end. Well, he just got a goaltending call in his favor. Brett Lurie, usually a pretty mild-mannered guy, but desperate times, Byron, I guess, call for a desperate attitude for Dusty May. I would say both coaches are, are relatively mild-mannered, because that one definitely hit the glass. But... Intensity will come out in these situations, in these moments, particularly the American Conference Championship semifinals. I should say the American Conference Tournament semifinals. It sounded want to go home for Temple. FAU, we know, is in the field, but they still want a conference tournament championship badly. Jaleel White denied! Wow. He just faced the wrath of the Lorian Express. Oh, Brian Greenlee around, and it would not go. Lorian couldn't get the rebound, and Riley with a three-on-one. Jordan Riley will get to the free-throw line, pushing Greenlee out of the way. High-flying accent on both ends. This call was so good. The Lorian Express. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it was a great play. I just still can't get over the, the call. I mean, did you plan that? Is that a plan? No good calls were planned. Whatever. Right, I got it. 
written down somewhere. Got to get this in. Uh, you're welcome to look at my notes if you'd like. Distracting. Okay. Riley at the line for two. I like basketball. It's good to know. Riley up to a dozen. The AAC on ESPN Plus, your exclusive home for more than 500 women's lacrosse, softball, and baseball games, and also all American Spring Championships. If you're an American Conference fan and you don't have it already, uh, already, don't wait any longer. ESPN Plus.com slash AAC. You gonna squeeze some softball in? Absolutely. Or the Orioles, really? Dominate your At life. Texas LSU on Tuesday. Nice. Number two versus three. Who went for LSU? This is Fun one of sport. the great times of the year. Not one a lot of the of great reviews. sports. Good flow, good rhythm, fast yeah. pace. Really enjoy soccer. And there's a pitch clock this year, which is awesome. Or an action clock. Rosado bumped. Found an open Nick Boy. That's short. And Riley throws it into the zone. Temple's looking for the lead. They haven't had that. Since the first half, a couple of minutes into the first half, it's six to two. Riley, fuck, Riley finishes three. strong, and the Temple Owls are back in front. Riley is just tough, physical, strong. When he's delivered with the basketball, he can get wherever he wants, and he explodes up to the rim. Something that a lot of guys don't have the strength to be able to do. Boyd into the paint, body by Hoffman. Miller on the lead count. Jaleel White, no, and Lorian came in to defend it. And Lorian is down behind the cheerleaders and behind the basket. He gets up and he jogs into the play late. Are they worried about the cheerleaders? He was behind the cheerleaders, he was pointing out where he was. Rosado slapped by White. That's the third foul against Jaleel White. Start to get up and down a little bit, and that's where Temple's got to be cautious. You want to be able to push Temple, but you've got to get back and then stop on the other side. You've got to get back, get set. You need to sprint back to get set. So FAU always feels like, even when the game starts to get a little up and down action, you need to make FAU feel as if they're constantly facing a set defense. Giancarlo Rosado, 58% free throw shooter. I think of things as, as the cumulative effect, right? Nigger Abdul Rahim said that about purpose, right? Well, the purpose is not just we want to win games, right? The purpose is we want to do everything well. Everything is a reflection of the outcome. Or other way around, outcome's a reflection of everything else. He's out of one for two. Fourth game in four days for Temple. They played Sunday as well. That game they won at the buzzer on a Sear Miller turnaround against UTSA. So really this is Temple's fifth game in seven days. I wonder how much that plays into it. Just building momentum into this event and then playing fearless and carefree and just letting it fly. It makes them dangerous. Riley, they cut off the angle for Miller, who will step into a long two and drain it. Sear Miller with 13. Sear Miller's been really good. He's also been patient. I think there are shot opportunities earlier in the clock, but he's been patient and got the better opportunity. Got Golden up on the bike, get loose. I haven't seen him for a few minutes. Lorient leans in. There's a foul on the action underneath. Rosado got pushed to the floor. I think Rosado sold that. I really do. I, you know, Hoffman's kind of saying it. It's Jaleel White's fourth foul. That's one bit of unfortunate news for Temple. Uh, they're extremely unlikely to be selected as an at-large team despite a great year. So an FAU loss means this is a two-bit league. We know FAU will make the field, and that means that all the other bubble teams are watching this game. Texas A&M fans, Seton Hall, Indiana State, St. John's fans. Inside to Golden, he is fouled because if FAU wins the lead, that keeps a spot yeah. open for another at-large team. And look, I think it's a tough thing to say to Power 5 teams, hey, play some American teams. We get why you want to play FAU. It's not a bad loss. It's great preparation for what you're going to face throughout the course of the year. But it's really hard for the temples of the world to get high-net-ranking Power 5 matchups.
At some point, we've got to see that. I think that's what, where you start to see multiple teams from this league come out, like South Florida. I hope they have a good schedule next year, and that allows them to play a good season and have a chance at making the NCAA tournament. But I, I hope that for a number of teams, UAB, another one. Who would want to play UAB throughout the course of the season? Who would want to play South Florida? Really, there's so many. Wichita State, you want to play Wichita State? Well, we've seen in league play how competitive this yes. league is. There are a lot of good teams, but the non-conference schedules were great, so the net yep. rankings are not great. Mount West is going to get six or seven teams in, it looks like. Five or six. No, they'll definitely get six. That's what Joe Lenardi says. I trust him. It's like the Bible. Hey, 67 out of 68 in the last few years. A lot of books aren't that accurate. Settle is fouled. Golden and Boyd were in there, and Steve Settle will go to the line for Temple, which leads by one with 11.27 to go, trying to win a fourth game in four days here at the American Tournament. I, I mean, when you look at Temple, they've had just enough hope and belief and momentum to become and maintain being the aggressor. That's been them the second half here. It was the second half yesterday, day before, they became the aggressor. Got through SMU. Champ Week presented by Principal continues tomorrow with the SEC Men's Championship in Nashville at 1 Eastern on ESPN. Auburn in Florida. Tigers outlasting Mississippi State. The Gators won a high-flying game with Texas A&M, which is going to sweat out in the next 24 hours again. Auburn, Florida, 1 Eastern. Noon Central tomorrow. You're right. It was five or six. I did my math wrong on the Mount West. So I have to award the game yep. to you. All right. Thank you. It's John one. Kevin six thousand. Almost gave you credit for it. <laughs> Take it all back. Kevin six thousand one. Fifty-two fifty after free throws split by Settle. Golden back on the floor for FAU. Golden in control for FAU. Double team comes. He gives it to Elijah Martin. He's had a quiet night. Into the corner, boy. Out top for Gaffney. Dribbling inside. Golden got to get it up. He does, and he missed it. Had to rush it with a shot clock about to expire. Yeah, Temple has done a really good job closing out on shooters. They're chasing at times, but their closeouts have been really strong. Gaffney made the right move. It's that lack of time on the clock made Golden rush the shot. Hoffman will swing it to Miller. He's hit a couple from around there. Miller on the drive, sets up, set oh no. And who touched it? Nick Boyd did not touch it. It's going to be Florida Atlantic ball. Settle would be a much better catch and shoot shooter if he really worked on his shot preparation, developing a little fluidity and rhythm into the shot. He does that off the bounce and he does it really well. He hits those step backs. There's a reason why he makes them. Adam Fisher getting the crowd up. And it just stared at the Temple fans behind the bench. He raised his arms vigorously. Looking for all the emotion and support his team can get. I think this zone's been disruptive too. Deep in the shot clock, Martin for three. Oops. Golden, maybe a little bump in the back there. Riley gets away with it. Temple takes it down the floor. We are halfway through the second half. How many rebounds does Riley have? That was his eighth. Actually, that was his ninth to go to the team I'm telling you, he has really done a great job rebounding. He was 11 and 10 yesterday. Miller's got Hoffman behind him. Behind the back, and Hoffman. Big. Deserves to get that roll after the distribution from Miller. Adam Fisher pounding the scorer's table. His team leads by five. Golden is fouled. Temple has its largest lead today after this bit of razzle-dazzle. That's just nice execution. There's going to be opportunities in the ball screen because of the way they're defending it. Flat Golding really dropping, playing more flat coverage. The more you can drag that thing out east to west, the more you can sustain and hold Flat Golden on the basketball. And if a guy like Hoffman's going to be open, he's got to be able to take and make that shot. He's been really good for him. Yep. Six of nine Temple from three and a half. Golden. Fouled by Hoffman. Now this is a big one. It's a big one. It's the fourth on Sam Hoffman. What do you do if you're out of Fisher? I think you got to take him out right now because you also have to remember these guys are tired. 
tired legs tend to foul and, and I would be less concerned about hey the first five ten minutes of the second half I'd be more concerned about the last ten minutes of the second half where guys are tired and you tend to make mistakes you tend to foul if you're, if you're a step behind the play you tend to foul if you're tired you tend to be a step behind the play you do the math and a quick coaching discussion there and decided very late to get a Como in the game so Hoffman on the bench at 926 he and White both have four fouls. Well, Golden's had his way on Akoma. Martin, good look. Martin short. And the rebound is here, Miller. That's a good look. But the two guys had to go with the roll, man. Had to show some help, so you're going to get an open look. Roger Martin just couldn't get it to go. And I think a lot of that has to do with the type of rhythm they haven't been able to create here in the second. FAU's missed 24 shots. Miller is blocked by Golden. I bring that up to say Temple has rebounded 22 of those 24. Yeah. Florida Atlantic had a 17-6 second chance point advantage yesterday. They but, have a single second chance point in the game. Yeah, but there's reasons for that. You, your good ball movement, good ball and body movement gets the defense scrambling and chasing east to west. And when shots going up, defense isn't in position to rebound. That's when you get offensive rebounding opportunities. Riley fading away. Weatherspoon clears the rebound. Golden gets off the deck. See, you've got to get your movement up if you want to be able to attack the offensive glass. Weatherspoon, that's a good look, and he missed another one. Six minutes without a basket for Florida Atlantic. Dizzoni will score it! Shane Dizzoni balloons the lead to seven. Well, just look at the two benches. That's all you need to know. If you're forced in Dusty Bay and this FAU team to call timeouts with 8.20 left. Man almighty, Temple's got a little something going in. They're the aggressive. Temple leading Florida Atlantic up 15 in the second half of seven in the game. They've been brilliant for three in the second half once more. This improbable run continues for the 11 seeded Temple Owls. 15 and 19 overall. 5 and 13 in the lead and taking it to the American favorite. Now, coming into today, our BPI, our basketball power in next game from FAU, a 70% chance of winning the league. And we said that seems pretty high. South Florida's only a 19%, but Temple had a 1.5% chance statistically of winning the league. This team has defied the numbers in this run. These were the numbers yep. coming into the day. And if Temple hangs on here, you're going to get 9.1 versus 1.5 UAB yeah. and Temple but, in the title game. But what you can't really be looking the numbers are just a, it's a matter of taking inputs and, and throwing into an algorithm and coming out with a percentage or a number. There are human inputs that you can't apply to that. And that's what's played out in a tournament setting. The human inputs are the, inputs are the things, inputs, excuse me, are the things that you can't even quantify, yet it may mean the outcome of the game. So you just can't write this stuff. That's why people that put money on their NCAA tournament bracket, I think you're nuts. <laughs> the unpredictable is the only thing that is predictable about the NCAA tournament and conference tournaments at that. And look at the SEC, one, two, three, one, one. Under eight to go, it's Temple by six. And what is the championship against the four seed UAB? Sir Miller's had a magnificent second half, and that is a magnificent move around Vlad Golden. Once more, the largest lead for Temple. Drop off for Martin from Golden. Martin in the lane, and he'll get to the line. We just keep saying the largest lead, the largest lead, the largest lead. Feels like Groundhog Day here at Dickey Zerina. Sear Miller, he's just been a great story. And then, go crazy! But other than that, we got to calm down. He, he's, he's become, we said during the break, he's become the darling of the yes, tournament. Adam really Fisher, has. we've had a lot of access to his huddles. We saw the celebration yesterday. And obviously right now, Temple is the story. A team that was 12 and 19 headed into the American Conference Tournament. One of the proudest programs in college basketball. The seventh yep. most wins in Division One history. And they are trying to make the American Final for the first time. Oh, Kevin, the story of this game goes back to when the score was 42-34 in favor of FAU. That is when the three-point foul that led to a seven-point swing happened. Since that time, 22-9 Temple. So, yes, a couple of the unfortunate for FAU. Tough situation. But good for Temple for capitalizing and attacking off of that situation.
A fumble just ran right over Boyd, and Temple will turn it over for just the seventh time. An offensive foul against Emmanuel Akpomo. And that's something that defensive players have adjusted to, the way they're playing those roll screens or screen rolls. He just run on the lower side of it. Look at Adam Fisher. You run on the lower side of it, if they try to roll, you get run over and you get the call. It's almost manipulating the game a little bit too much. Last FAU field goal was more than seven minutes ago. Davis. He has had a really tough night, and he gets the friendly bounce. John L. Davis only his third main basket. Lead is down to four with seven to play. I think it's been a combination of maybe playing too golden a lot, not creating that flow that they, they thrive on. But also the Temple defense. They sat back in zone from time. They switched up their defense well, and that, that limits John L. Davis, too. On a step back. Miller again! Ice cold as Sear Miller from deep. Down the floor, Golden. Knocked away by Apollo, and Temple retakes it. As Sear Miller with 18. Four out of eight from three. Start to rethink how you're defending ball screens with a sheer move. Akomo's going to screen it down. They're going to come up high. That's uh, Akomo, not, not as much of a threat. Settle and a poked away with, well, the shot clock just kept rolling. It should be at 3.7. And the officials will reset that. Look, when you're sliding underneath here, you get held up on screens and you get. Tip a lot about it. They, they lost 10 games in a row. And I, I don't say that to be disparaging. I say that to be kind of to honor their struggle, right? And, and sometimes that's what you have to do as a fan base. You got to honor the struggle of your team if you really want to get behind them because that's what allows them to turn it around the way this Temple team has here, here in Fort Worth. Well, it gets an end to Riley at the end of the shot clock. Riley did not realize there was about to be a shot clock violation. Jordan Riley just completely missed it, and it's a turnover for Temple. <laughs> Where as a coach, man, God bless coaches. Because what you want to say is like, dude, we just talked about this. We had a break. We got, we had a huddle. We had it set up, and it was all based on the, the time on the shot clock. Sam Hoffman and his four fouls back on the floor for Temple. I'm not a fan of zones, but I, I like what Temple's done with his zone. Davis throws oh, right through it. <laughs> that was a soft zone. Davis with ten. 62-57, the Owls of Temple against the Owls of Florida Atlantic. What will hurt Temple the most is if I think you can put a pace on this game. Maybe by picking up the pressure a little bit. Miller again. That one way off the mark. Rebound, Nick Boyd. They don't, they don't want to settle for bad ones. He couldn't get the pace here because Miller jumped the passing lane. And then Miller maintained possession after the ball was kicked away. That was a bigger turnover than you understand. A bad shot that gives FAU an opportunity maybe to cut it to two, but really just changed the feel of this game when you see Miller picks it off. The carelessness from John L. Davis again. Hardy Hoffman has space. He'll step inside on Golden. Back out for Riley. Three to shoot it. Riley, no. Here comes Boyd trying to put some pace on the game with five to play. Boyd inside. Boyd tied up. Boyd lost it. Another steal for Miller. Steve Settle now will finish. Miller with his 13th steal of the tournament. Setting up Settle. You get to a point now where FAU's got to play faster, yet their decision making has really hurt them the most. And Temple's been able to capitalize. There have been opportunities for FAU to take over this game and just haven't been able to do it. That's going to help. But that's not changing the game. You've got to get stops. You've got to start to dictate the last four minutes and 20 plus seconds. Davis beginning to heat up. He's got 13. Four point game. 420 to go. Bubble teams all across America sweating this one out. How is Temple the 11 seeds? Oh, this, they're really playing with a confidence that is unlike anything we've seen from the all season. Here come the Owls, a little fumble by Greenlee. Golden wants it. Golden attacking Hoffman and his four fouls. Golden gets right around him. Land Golden with 21. And we've got a Temple timeout. a party in Baldwin Arena this year. There's a traveling party for Florida Atlantic. The band, swag surfing. Florida Atlantic
Atlanta's got a little something going here. They're Might add, they too. Might I add that uh, there's more clothing? <laughs> you go to the beach, man. People show up in bathing suits at that place. It's wild. Winner gets UAB tomorrow afternoon, 2.15 local, 3.15 Eastern. FAU is in. Temple and UAB need to win the conference tournament to get the AQ. Take away an at-large bid from somebody. Hoffman gets it to Miller. Barely slipped. Deep shot clock again. Miller's been the wizard in the second half. That's not close. And Golden High points it for the rebound. That really started out with the change they made in ball, ball screen coverage. Golden came up and just blew it up. And you may take a risk with someone else being able to beat you, but it's a risk you've got to take. The rest can switch. FAU's made its last four shots. Here's Nick Boyd. Davis driving. He's taken over the game in the second half. And he ties it. It doesn't look like there's much room, but he does such a good job of kind of slithering with the ball through the defense. If you don't want to overcommit to it, you got Golden in the lob opportunity, so it gets an easy way. Seven in a row for Florida Atlantic. Riley for Desani. Davis, a hard screen by top and freeze Desani for the Temple lead. And they just had answers. And now they need to stop with your Temple. Shane Desani with seven, Davis missed a three. And you know Miller is going to slow the ball down here. Probably get the clock under two for Temple with the lead. Nobody's been better at controlling the pace in these late game situations than Sear Miller. And they've been in a lot of them. Four straight games. We just got a load one. Riley with under two. Riley driving it in. And a blocking foul is called against Elijah Martin. It's interesting, the same exact call the other way in the first half. Man, that's tough. Now, can you argue that Riley lowered the shoulder there? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Because you can be moving as a defender on a basketball. I that's kind of uh, something people have struggled to make sense of. You, you can be moving and have, be in legal guarding position. I can't stand that I'm using like the actual terminology because I think the games have gotten so rule ridden as opposed to just like what makes sense. The Temple presented by Principal continues tonight on ESPN with the ACC Championship. Another one of the bubble teams face sweat out. North Carolina State trying to go five and five against UNC. That's coming up in just over a half hour on ESPN on the ESPN app. Would have made that easy to be set. Duke and Virginia and Syracuse since that part, since they got that bulletin board into it. Oh, wow. High pass collected by Golden. Hangs onto the ball here. Hoffman with a four fouls defending him. Golden goes right over the top. And the lead's back down to two with 100 seconds to go. Just as you would have predicted it, right? Temple with the lead for the mid 30 left to play. Golden's tied at the rear high with 23, but will it be enough? Miller slipped around into the ball screen. Hoffman inside. Miller outside. Miller again. Oh, goodness gracious. It is still Miller time. Davis with the buck. Golden fouled. A minute 14 to go. Golden's going to go to the line after another big time shot from the Sear Miller. It's wonder how many games FAU has won where Golden's been the their balance is what makes them so good, but there's not much you can prepare for when, when someone like Sid Miller is going to make the shot that he's made in this second half. This game has been completely different since that 7 0 run that they went on without FAU touching the basketball. Completely different games. Three for six at the line. A mind boggling story developing here in Fort Worth. <laughs> One more for Golden. One more miss. An empty set for FAU. And like that last possession, he's really covered to see Miller well roll off the ball screens, but then when he got it back, he was open. So Miller double team. Temper 
does have a couple of timeouts. He got rid of it to Riley with 10 to shoot. I would let Miller get it back. He's been too good. Riley doesn't seem like he wants to give it back. And Riley gets fouled by Ford. He's tripped up. It's the sixth foul, which is not entirely a good thing. This is going to reset the shot clock to 20. Dusty Bay is looking at the clock and determining now do you play it out or do you foul? This Temple could take this thing down to 30 seconds with a two possession lead. Maybe you foul the right guy? Yeah, I think so. I don't think you can waste too much time. On the inbound, Settle. Settle's going to drive it to the basket. He missed it. There's a foul on the shot on Davis. So it ends up being a quick foul anyway. I like to play though from Settle just being the aggressor. I mean, that is something that he was not able to do earlier this year. You know, manage the pressure, rip through, get to the basket. And this team is different, you know, they have really changed. They have the same personnel. Yeah, we get it. Personnel hasn't changed all season. The same personnel that's on the floor, they lost 10 straight games. But they were close, and they started to develop a belief, and that's why they're in the situation that they're in right now. So 64% free throw shooter. Fawley drains the first. This is their fourth game. Correct. Fourth game in four days. I've had to see that over and over again. Look, this is their fourth game in four days. Fifth game in seven days. Back to Sunday's buzzer beating win. If they don't beat UTSA Sunday, yeah, they are like, yeah, they're the fourth team seed in this league. And they don't have the momentum that they've been able to carry. All right, a six point game with the miss. Two possessions if the possessions result in threes. Florida Atlantic, the final four team from the season ago. Boyd, and Jeez. we got a goal to look at Riley. Look at look at it, which becomes a free play out for both teams. Not a bad big ring. Somebody's going to lose a spot if Temple wins, and either Temple or UAB is going to gain a spot if the Cherry and White Owls can hang on. There's only Kelemi in down here, gets it into Miller. Miller will get to the line on a blocking foul against Martin. And it's a one-on-one for Hasir Miller, a 76% free throw shooter. I thought Hasir Miller got the ball too easily. I mean, he just got the ball in. That's not the guy you want to have. Your FAU, you don't want him to have the ball in his hands. Best free throw shooter on the floor. And he's not going to give it up. I think that's smart, too. I never liked it. My brother did that to me. He would never give it up, and I couldn't shoot free throws at the end of the game. But, you know, he didn't want to win. It's not like I'm still hanging on to that. No, that's, that's the good thing. I forgot to move it. Miller at the line today. Nothing for nothing. He said five threes. This is his first free throw try. And he missed it. All right. Here comes Davis. Step back. Davis fouled, shooting at three. Oh, no. The cardinal sin from Jordan Riley. <laughs> the one thing you just can't do. And it's a foul. It, it is. It's a foul. I mean, he's, he's there. Tough. These are these are scripts you can't write. You know, it's just the way basketball goes. It's the fourth foul on Riley. Davis, the second best free throw shooter in the American Athletic Conference, gets three free throws to try to make this a one-point game. Orient Weatherspoon coming in. Davis rolls in the second. Probably going to take more now. Gonna go small and fast. I think he plays steel first. Boyd's gonna check out as well. You gotta steal. You, you got you just time. There's plenty of time left in this game, sort of. One more for John L. Davis. Shared the player of the year honors with South Florida's Chris Youngblood, hoping to advance to the final, unlike Youngblood. Davis goes three for three. It's a one-point game. The zoning on the inbound. Shade is here, Miller. Okay with that drop. Settle. Tied up to Bull. Wow. Temple has the arrow, but that's a significant one because yeah. it flips the arrow back to oh. FAU with 27 to go. Well, the biggest key is you don't. And he made, by the way, John Davis made all three. Yeah. Big. 
Donald Davis after a four point first half, 14 of the second. You gotta watch long at this point, too. Can't move. Tough place to get the ball in bounds. He's only gonna throw it in. Riley cuts for the ball. Miller looking oh, for the ball. One of the games to So, our trap out of his hands. 23 seconds. Miller throws it into a dangerous position. There's only up the floor to Hoffman. Have to foul. Wow. They've taken a lot of time now. Understand the initial trap, but a lot of time went off the clock. It's 14.8. Greenlee commits a fourth foul. And this is the last one and one opportunity for Temple. It'll be Dizoni, a 72% free throw shooter. But what is he in this situation, Kevin? With 14 points to go. I don't care. You throw numbers out. Right? You throw numbers out. Who are you in the moment? That's really what it comes down to. Khalil White's going to check in for Hoffman for Temple. Adam Fisher sets up the defense. Golden has returned to the floor for FAU along the board. One and one for DeZoni. He wow. still tough. You still have a lot of time, and you do if you're Temple with a potential three point lead. You still have to be cautious of foul. Do you foul at three is a question, and if so, when do you do it? Now they say that, look, FAU is going to want to extend the game if they can. So if you can get to the basket, you take the two. One more for Bizzoni. Then he gets it both. 74-71 Temple. FAU down three with a couple of timeouts, and John L. Davis will inbound. I would give it right back to Davis if possible. They throw it across the floor. Boyd can get to the basket. Boyd gets bumped by Settle, a foul. With 10 seconds to go. So the key for Boyd, obviously, is make two. Uh, you make two, it's a different situation. You want to reapply the pressure back on your opponent to make free throws to close out the game. Dazzoni just making those two so big, the first one touched every part and went in. Big boy, the second best free throw shooter on the Owls by percentage, 83.6. Everybody here standing up. Boy, was six for six in the quarterfinal yesterday. He makes the first conquest. And Hoffman will return to the floor for Temple, taking out White. One more for Boyd, the redshirt sophomore, with a game winning shot. In the NCAA tournament opener last year. Boyd spins it home. And he'll check out of the game again. Whether Stewart is in or in place, and Florian gets golden. Right, same situation, other than the fact that you, you really can't take time. You can get a jump ball, great. Right? But if not, you got a foul. Greeley's on the floor with four fouls for FAU. Temple has a timeout. And Dizzoni will inbound it again. Dizzoni searching for Miller, gets it into Hoffman, back to Dizzoni, not fouled, and there it is. So it's Dizzoni back to the line. I fell off, but Dizzoni just made two. I don't want him getting the ball back. He fell off. He's made a couple threes, but, but you want to put somebody on the line who you want to test. And I wouldn't test Dizzoni again after he made the first two. So 7.6 to go. That was a fourth foul on Davis. And a Shane Dizzoni for two more. Junior, who began his career at Vanderbilt, was originally committed to St. Joe's, and Dizzoni has just left the door open. Remember, FAU has two timeouts. They can advance the ball across half court and take a timeout if they want. I don't know if that's playing to the advantage, though, if you can get him downhill. Also, then going to face a defense that may be different from what you prepared for. So, it's that. One more for Shane Dizzoni. Nope. He missed them both. My goodness. John L. Davis. Basket for the win. Davis to the basket. Hands it off for Lorian. They can't get the shot. Oh. 